an in-depth zipper tutorial, and we're gonna do a little kit bashing. That's coming up. Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Reese. This is Weaver Leather Supply. Today, we're gonna be doing three different things at once. The first one is that we're gonna take an in-depth look at zippers, how they work, how to assemble them, how to install them, how to place them, all the important stuff we're gonna take a look at today for zippers. Number two, we're gonna do a little kit bashing. Now, I know bashing makes it sound like I'm insulting the kits or something like that. That's not the case. Kit bashing is something that they use in the movie industry, and we're going to adapt it to this, but we'll talk about that a little later. Then at the end of the video, we're going to take a look at the project, how it was finished, and I'm going to tell you what I would have done differently if I went back and did it again. So let's go ahead and jump in with Zippers 101. So first things first, if we're gonna take a look at zippers, we need to know what the different parts of it are called. So we got a little graphic here that I took off the YKK website. Let's take a look at that and it'll explain it really well. Starting at the top, we've got the top stop. Then you've got the slider, the elements, which is something we would normally call the teeth of the zipper. Then you've got the zipper tape or tape. Then you've got the bottom stop, the insert pin, the box pin, and the retaining box. Now, don't panic. You don't need to remember most of that. Really, what you need to know is tape, teeth, and slider. Everything else good to know, but you really don't have to, you know, have in-depth knowledge about the different parts. So, zippers come in two basic forms. You got pre-made where they're ready to go straight out of the box, and then you've got the bulk zipper by the yard kind of approach. This is great for production, but at the same time, you've got to assemble these. They're not ready to go straight out of the box. These bulk zippers are really good if you're doing a lot of production work where, you know, for projects that involve zippers. But the downside to them is you've got to assemble them. It takes a few minutes to do that. It's not terrible. The assembly process on these DIY zippers is the exact same process as if you would were to modify one of these pre-made ones. Now, why would you need to modify a pre-made zipper? There's, there's various reasons why you might want to modify these. Most of the time, it comes down to the fact that they're too long and you need to make them shorter. So the first thing we need to do is measure and mark how long we need the zipper to be. When you're measuring a zipper, there's two different factors that you need to consider. How long does the tape need to be? Because this is what we're going to use to attach the zipper to the project. And second, how long does the zipper portion, the teeth, need to be. So the easy way to make sure that your zipper is going to be the right length is first, we want to start off by measuring the tape, and we're going to put a mark on the tape where we want to cut, but don't cut yet. After we've done that, then we're going to unzip the zipper below the mark that we just created, and then we're going to use our scissors to cut the tape and carefully cut between the teeth. That's going to give us two pieces of our zipper that are no longer attached to the rest of the zipper and the slide. Then we're going to need to fit the zipper to the opening in our project. Now, don't worry, we're going to talk in just a second how to create that opening, all the different steps you need to go through to make sure that it's square and parallel and all that. We're going to talk about that in a second. But for now, let's assume that you've created the opening and we're trying to fit the zipper into that opening. Now it's time to modify it so that the zipper portion fits perfectly in that opening. We want to mark the zipper tape just barely past the opening of the leather from here, we're going to need to remove several of the zipper teeth, because if we don't, as it tucks up under the leather, you'd be able to run your finger across it and feel kind of that bulge, that bulk under there from the teeth. And really, that's not what we want. We just want the zipper tape to be up under the edge. That's going to give us a good way to secure it to the project without having that the bulkiness of the teeth that go up under there. But how do we remove the teeth? It's actually a lot easier than you might think. They make tools that will remove teeth from zippers, but I don't actually have a pair, so I'm just gonna be using wire cutters. The only thing that I would point out here is you probably wanna be wearing some kind of eye protection. As I was clipping the ends off of these, these zipper teeth, a lot of times they would go shooting across the room, so you don't wanna hit yourself or somebody else in the eye with one. You're gonna need about a half inch of zipper tape past each end of the zipper. That's gonna give us what we need to make sure that the zipper is secured to the project. So now it's time to put the zipper back together, and don't worry, it's a lot easier than what you might think. Might take you a couple of tries to get it, but it's not too bad. We're gonna slide one side of the zipper into the slide until we feel a little bit of resistance. Then we're gonna do the same thing with the other side. Then we're gonna line up the tails of the zipper tape so that they're even. Mm -hmm. 
getting the slide back on the zipper is really not that difficult. The challenge becomes getting the teeth of the zipper to line up correctly. So just like my fingers here, they need to be offset just a little bit. What can happen sometimes when you put that slide on there is that it doesn't line up correctly. They'll still go together, but what you'll end up with is something that looks more like this. So you've got these two teeth hanging out down here on the bottom and there's no match for them. That's what we want to avoid. So there's a lot of times you're gonna to need to take the slide back off and try it again. Usually within three or four times, it's pretty easy to get them to line up correctly. At this point, you've got a working zipper. Now we could add a stop to the bottom and technically that's the correct way to do it. The stops at the bottom, they come in a couple of different types. I tend to use what looks like a staple. On a project like this, because the leather, the opening in the leather is gonna act as a stop for us and the zipper is gonna be stitched to the project, in my opinion, it's not really necessary to add the stop and it adds more bulk to the zipper. So I tend to leave them off if I have a situation like this where the leather of the project acts as a stop and it's sewn to the project so that it's not gonna go anywhere. But if you do want to put them on there, it's super simple. Just push the prongs through, make sure it's in the right position and fold it over and you're good to go. If you were to get bulk zippers, like you know this big one that I've got here, the assembly process for this is exactly the same as what we just went through. You just have to have all the different pieces and parts to put it together. Now, one thing I will point out, the teeth come in all different sizes. This one has super fine teeth on it. This one has pretty aggressive teeth and this one's somewhere in the middle. Generally speaking, the finer the teeth, the more delicate the zipper is, but the more elegant it'll look on the project. Something big like this is more rugged and can really take a little bit more abuse than something more fine like this would be. So really you just have to match it to your project. So now that we understand how to put a zipper together, how to customize, modify, install, all that good stuff, why don't we take that knowledge and put it into a real project and see how it works in the real world? And for that, I thought we might have a little bit of fun. So there's a term in the movie prop industry called kit bashing. Kit bashing is essentially, let's say you've got a prop maker that needs to make a, a spaceship. They're creating a brand new spaceship for a movie. Well, after he's got it modeled and you know the, the, the fuselage and the wings, and if it has wings on it, all of that are done and ready to go. Well, it needs all the little accessories on the outside of that ship to make it look like it's not just made of plastic, right? It, in that situation, the prop maker has a choice. They can either go through and make each individual little accessory to go on the outside, or they can simply go raid some model kits, like off the shelf model kits that you might buy at Hobby Lobby or something like that. So in this example, our prop maker needs fuel tanks to go on the outside of the spaceship. Well, he can make them, or he could simply go raid, let's say there's a racing kit that has barrels in it. So he takes these barrels, he cuts them in half, contours them to the outside of the spaceship, and now instead of barrels, they're fuel cells or fuel tanks. That's kit bashing. And today I thought we might do something similar. Weaver sent me three different kits of theirs, and I'm doing this with their permission, I'm not just raiding their kits, but they sent me a purse, a wallet, and a coin purse. So I thought today, to add a little bit of challenge to this, what we might do is say, great, we've got all the pieces here, let's do a little kit bashing. What can I make from these three kits with the least amount of modification to the leather that's in the kit, and two, only using what comes in the kit, and number three, it has to be something that at the end of it, I wouldn't mind you know, like putting my maker's mark on and sharing on social media or something like that, right? It's gotta be something I'm not embarrassed to show. Really setting some high standards here. Pretty much if I'm not embarrassed to show it to you, it's a win. So after rummaging around through the kits for about an hour and playing with the different combinations, what I came up with and decided to make was a tool pouch that a woman might wanna carry. It's like a tool roll and a club bag got together and made a thing. What would that look like? So now that I've got my pieces together and I know what direction I'm going, at least loosely, we need to make sure that all the pieces are the same width. 
And this particular bag is gonna have some inner pockets. They're the most narrow of all the different pieces I'm working with. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut all the pieces to the same width so that we're essentially starting at ground zero. So now that that's done, we gotta think about the end product. We got everything cut to the right size. We want this to look like a finished project at the end, which means I need to dye it now before I start assembling everything. And to do that, I'm just gonna dip dye everything black. Because let's face it, if you're a woman, you're going out for a fancy night on the town, you wanna take your formal toolkit, not that rustic, you know, beat up one back at the shop. You need your formal toolkit. Once the dye is dry, go ahead and buff off any excess residue that might be on the leather and seal it with your favorite sealer. Now I'm using tan coat, but there's a lot of good ones on the market. You just want something that seals in the color and protects the leather. Deciding where to put the zipper is kind of a project by project kind of decision. I can't tell you how to do it on every single project, but I can give you some guidelines and that kind of thing that will help as you're going through and doing this. So for me, I'm gonna be taking the main piece of leather that's gonna create this project and I'm gonna fold it into thirds. I'm gonna fold it in on itself. So instead of taking two pieces of leather and trying to attach each one separately to opposite sides of the zipper, I'm just gonna take one of those folds, I'm gonna take one of those folds and I'm gonna put the zipper in that. That'll give us a much more stable platform to attach the zipper to. So how do we do this? Well, first I'm gonna fold the leather over and mark the center of that fold on both ends. Now, just a light mark, that's all you need. We're not trying to scar it, score it, or anything like that. We just need something that's barely visible that we can use as a reference point in the next step. From there, we need to decide on the end margin. End margin can be described as how much leather do I have on each end of the zipper. For me, I want at least a half inch on each end of that zipper. That's gonna give us plenty of room to stitch to. It's gonna be nice and stable. You can go more than that, but for me, I want at least a half inch on each end of that zipper. From there, I'm gonna measure half of my zipper. This is gonna be the measurement that we're gonna use for the opening. Whatever that measurement is, I'm gonna take it and divide it in half. So if my zipper is an inch wide, half of that is a half an inch. I'm gonna take a half inch and divide that in half and I'm left with a quarter inch. So I'm gonna take my wing dividers, set them to a quarter inch and put one mark at the top and bottom on each side of that center line that I just created. Then I'm gonna take my scratch all and a straight edge and connect those two dots, those four dots that I just put in there. Then I'm gonna grab my round end punch and be very careful to line it up with the lines that I just created and punch the curves on each end of the opening for my zipper. Then I'm gonna grab a straight edge and my box cutter and go ahead and cut the straight lines between those two curves that I just punched. If we've done it correctly, it should look something like this. Then we're gonna go back, we're gonna repeat the process that we just reviewed earlier in the video on how to customize and assemble our zipper. As far as adhering the zipper tape to the project, there's a couple of different routes you can go. You can go double-sided tape. It's a fantastic way to do it. A lot of people do. It makes a lot of sense because it's a really secure way to attach your zipper tape to the project. 
For me, there's a couple of drawbacks that I'm not real wild about. One is that once you attach the zipper to the project, if you need to reposition it, that can be a little bit of a pain. The other thing is pushing a needle through uh, double-sided tape, it can come out a little gummy. The, the needle, as it goes through, picks up a little, a little bit of that adhesive, and I'm not fond of that. So for me, white glue is the way to go. Now, there's a couple of different white glues on the market. All of them are going to work. It just depends on how quickly they dry. They all got their pros and cons. But for me, I'm going to use white glue. White glue allows me to reposition easily and quickly. So if I get my zipper in there crooked, it's pretty easy to adjust it. It dries clear and it'll hold long enough for me to stitch the zipper in place. So once the glue's dry, it's time to stitch our zipper in place. And really there's no going back on this, so we wanna make sure that we get it right. The easiest way that I've found to do this is to take our project, flip it over so that we're looking at the back of the zipper. Then we're gonna take our wing dividers and we're gonna place them down against the, the edge of the leather and the zipper. Essentially what we're trying to do is open these up so that they land right in the middle of that overlap. If this is your leather and this is your zipper tape, we wanna hit it right in the middle. That way we're not too close to either edge and we've got enough bite into that zipper tape so that the zipper won't go anywhere.
In the end, I absolutely love the way this turned out. We even got a little horse hair uh, dangle tassel thing on the end of it. Now, I know it looks a little bit like a club bag, and let's be honest, there's no reason ever to need to take your leather tools with you to the club. So that's not what this is. The idea is, let's say that you're going to the guild and you're gonna hang out and do some tooling with some of your friends there, or maybe you need to do a quick repair for a customer on a project or something like that. This is a great little way just to put a few essential tools into a nice looking little pouch and carry them with you. Now, what would I do differently? Well, there's a couple of things. One, I would put gussets on it. Now, within the parameters of the challenge that we laid out, I couldn't do that because none of the pieces in the kits would work for gussets. Trust me, I tried. So, you know, I would clean this edge up right here a little bit. I'd put some gussets on it. That would make it easier for it to open. Um, the other thing is I would probably make this portion of it right here a little deeper. The tools do drop down in there and they fit, but they're snug. They're kind of tight in there. So I would make this maybe a half inch longer just to give it a little bit more space in there. The only other thing that I would really do is maybe finish out these edges a little better. But again, you know, gussets, that would help a lot right there. That would solve the problem. But other than that, turned out great. The only thing that I used on here that didn't come with the project is this little horse hair, horse hair tassel that hangs off the end. I thought that was kind of cool. And the line 24 snap, that didn't come with any of the kits. Those are the only two things here that I used that were not with the kit. But that's gonna do it for this video. I will see you in the next one. In the meantime, go make something amazing.